Hello and welcome to this flow fight tutorial. We're going to construct this dome and it will be relatively straightforward except for these beams where we have to pay close attention to scale in order to preserve the shape of this profile throughout. But apart from that it's uh, mostly just plain mapping. We're going to start from here where we have already constructed the basic building blocks and we've also constructed proxies for our real geometry. So we have our top molding, the meandric pattern and the beam. And on the target side we have turned these into components and the point is that we have a full dome here and when we map our uh, real geometry we can just replace the content of these uh, components and then we can see the full result here directly. So we model 1 16th of the dome and uh, we have also added an extra layer of padding down here and that is to force the vertices here to align with the XY plane and that means that the, uh, the underside of this block is aligned with the, uh, with the ground. So we're going to start with the beam, that is the most tricky part. And we have to make, make uh, three distinct uh, points in relation to this beam. So we're going to start with some proxy geometry. So here we have a semicircular proxy for the beam, and we're going to map this. As we can see, the beam starts in a uh, semicircular shape. And this uh, thickness is constant throughout the beam. However, the beam ends up in a, a semi-elliptical shape, and that is because while the uh, thickness is constant, we have a contraction as we move up the dome. And we want to counteract this contraction by uh, diminishing the thickness as we move up this beam. So we want to end up with a thickness more or less like this. So we want to taper the geometry on the source side and to get a scale on this tapering we can compare this edge up here which is 720 millimeters with, uh, with an edge down here which is 1635 and that means that we have a contraction of about 44 percent as we move up the dome. So we're going to taper the dome on the source side and we do that by just scaling this top face to 0 0.44 and we then map this and we can now see that the, the shape up here is approximately semicircular. We can also see that the cuts here they are very jagged and we want to avoid that. And this is an artifact from the source side because when we taper the geometry we introduced uh, triangles that run the full length of the beam. And these triangles creates, uh, creates this uh, jagged geometry. So we want to avoid that and we're going to step back to before we tapered. And we're now going to cut the geometry and Flowify works in two steps. The geometry is first intersected and the way that works is that we move this uh, projection grid like a grinder through the geometry, like so. And after that the intersected geometry is mapped over to the target side. Flowfile lets us divide these operations into two distinct steps, so we can first cut separately and then we can flowify without cut. And we're going to use this, so we will cut this geometry. And cut creates uh, an intersected copy on top of the original geometry, so we're going to remove this old geometry. And then we're going to taper this uh, intersected copy. 0.44. You can see that the triangulation now ended up bet uh, between the cuts 
and also the tapering did not alter the position or the orientation of these cuts. So this geometry is still valid in relation to the projection grid. We can now flowify this geometry without cut. And as you can see, this uh, result is much better. The third points, uh, the third point relates to the horizontal part of the beam, and uh, we're going to taper this uh, proxy. to 0 0.44 and then we're going to map it as you can see the horizontal part here is much too big and we want the length here to be the same as, as the length here so we have to scale the geometry vertically on the source side so we're going to step back to before we tapered and then we're going to separate the horizontal geometry from the vertical geometry by drawing two edges. And then we just select the horizontal part and we scale it to 0 0.44. And then we taper this. And we didn't have to cut the geometry here before we tapered because uh, in this geometry taper did not uh, introduce any triangles. And now we map this and this is the result we want. So the shape of the profile down here is approximately the same as the profile here. So we can now map our real geometry. And here we have our real geometry. And we're going to start by scaling the horizontal part. And as before, we first have to separate the horizontal part from the vertical, like so. And then we select the top part. And we scale this to 0.44 and we're then going to cut the geometry before we taper it and we have to remove the original geometry and now we taper this to 0.44 Now we map this without cut, so flow file without cut. We clean the result and smooth it. And then we copy this or control X. and we replace the geometry in our component here with the real geometry. And then we can see the full result here directly. So we're going to proceed with the uh, top molding. And it has the same shape, the same profile as this molding, but it is uh, scaled. So we just map, map that, Flowify, clean it and smooth it and then we control X and we replace the component and now we have a top molding here. And finally, we have the meandered pattern, and we have fitted this between the uh, the mouldings, and we've also tapered it a bit. 
And this is also just uh, a plain mapping. So flow it. Clean it, smooth it, and then we replace the uh, geometry in our component. So this is the full result, and apart from the beam, it was uh, it was uh, quite simple. And while the geometry is uh, rather complex. Uh, this is all solids, and the different pieces fit nicely together. So that concludes our uh, tutorial, and uh, thanks for watching.